up with a coat and tie, Paul. I guess the, uh, the Alabama native feels like he's inside, indoors, got to dress up. Although when you watch him, you'll look down, you'll see he's got his tennis shoes on. He's still on after <laughs> The special teams for Syracuse have been outstanding. Kadri Ismail, right there, the missile, the freshman, and the younger brother of Notre Dame's rocket, Rahib Ismail, averaging close to 30 yards per return. This is a game that we anticipated would be despite decided by special teams play these, these two teams are very evenly matched in a lot of different areas uh, if you put them on paper and feed them into the computer the game should come out close and uh, I think we'll see that as, uh, as the ball game progresses a six play drive capped by Andrews and he boots it away and here comes Ishman trying to get outside to the 31. Bill Scharr, the junior, out to direct the orange on the attack. Following the fine return by Ismail, Scharr has thrown but one touchdown pass this year. Syracuse as a team has but two. Rob Moore took the other one in from Rob Carpenter, as you saw in our pregame show. The front line, the big matchup, John Flannery, the outstanding senior, Turnell Sims, has drawn the attention of the FSU staff. The coaches will be coming his way. Defensively, that is Odell Higgins rather than Higgins, with Hayes and Henry Ostrzewski flanking him. Tremendous speed, Keith, in the outside linebacking core with Carruthers on the inside, the Knowles leading tackler. Carter and Carruthers anchor that interior and do a great job. McCorvey, Reagans, Dedrick Dodge, and rule number six, Leroy Butler in the secondary. There's another Syracuse player who was shaken up on the return, and it is Ismail. And they are attending to his left leg. But it appeared that he stumbled when he broke out the second time trying to get outside of Florida State's contain. I tell you this, Astro Turf, Coach Bowden will tell you he hates it. Florida State only plays on it twice this year. This is the first time in the University of Florida in their season-ending game down in Gainesville. And uh, the coaches do not like this stuff. It's, uh, it, it just reaches up and grabs you. That is a terrible thing to see. A great athlete like Ismail, and it appears to be his left knee. First play on offense for Syracuse. Ken in the fullback, Owens, number 44 at the tail. Shar wants to go to the air. Under pressure, he gets it away incomplete. Intended for Rob Carpenter ahead of the 42-yard line. He got pressure, did Shar, and it is Syracuse and its ability to protect him that will play a major role in today's outcome. Well, you know, there you see the number on Shar. Syracuse coming into the ball game ranks 24th in the country in passing offense. They'll put the ball up about uh, uh, 26, 28 times a game, and uh, they get some good yardage out of it when they do. Not real fleet footed is Shar. Doesn't run the option well, but can throw. Set the squeeze, the snap. He's the tight end in motion. Actually flanked out to the right side. This is Owens out of the back there. Back to the line of scrimmage. And nothing more. Carruthers was there. Dedrick Dodge, number 28, on the spot as well. Syracuse doesn't throw to their backs that often, and a lot of times when they do, it slip screens or here a moving or quick screen. Owen only a three-yard average on receptions, that being his seventh. Florida State doing a good job of screening it out, Thompson especially, allowing him to suit the catch from the inside. Shelton Thompson, the senior three-year letterman. Rob Carpenter drops to the bottom of your picture. Split backs, third and ten. Shaw off his back foot, intercepted. Leroy Butler. First down, Florida State, it's second turnover. Blake Bednar's had to make the 
stop, but Butler with his third interception in two games. Well, for you armchair quarterbacks, you'll see it from the end zone, a simple overthrow. Char gets a little pressure, just overthrows the ball. Butler in a deep zone coverage, just there to receive it. That's the kind we used to call the gimme. Does a good job of just moving it back upfield. Florida State with the second turnover, second opportunity in great field position. Rob Moore was the intended receiver. Syracuse failed to gain a yard. The Knolls for a second time earning the turnover. Deep in Syracuse territory. Here comes Carter breaking free. Close to a first down at the 21-yard line. Bobby Bowden said Leroy Butler broke open the two-lane game last week with defense, and when you earn turnovers deep in your opponent's territory, well, it could happen a second straight week. Well, and that guy, three INTs, he's paid his dues, a senior, uh, a leader on that defense, quickly emerging as a very important leader. And uh, last two games, you see Coach Mickey Andrews there visiting with him. He's done a great job. The same left. Dossie right, there goes Carter for about two. Nice reaction on the play. And the tackle made by Tim Sanquist, who came up quickly. He up the strong safety, who is third for the Orangemen in tackles this year. Doesn't make an open field snap. Carter may have stopped. Carter may still be running. Well, counter action, Florida State using because the front line of Syracuse is so quick, trying to get them moving one way and bring people either on a trap or bring the tight end back to the inside and break on a little counter, trying to trying to capitalize on that quickness. There goes Dossie. Open, the catch, running out of the jersey, let's say. Inside the 15, and close to the first down. The linebacker, John Lasardi. Filling in for the injured David Bavaro, along with Greg Walker, the corner on the tackle. Well, Florida State trying to get one-on-one. -on -one. Lassane at 6'4", 210. That's his ninth reception going against Walker at 5'8", 179. A senior against a sophomore. And Walker fortunately gets a lot of help. Lassane had a pulled abdominal muscle in practice this week. He's not 100%. Didn't show it there. The Knolls by a field goal. Eight minutes remaining in the first quarter. Florida State threatening. Third and short, power on. First down, Edgar Bennett. That sophomore at 222 pounds, plowed through the left side. Dan Busey, the inside linebacker, the senior tri-captain, knocked him down. When you look at Bennett's numbers, I know Coach Bowden's aware of this, a 3.8 yard average doesn't look that great, but what Bennett doesn't do is lose yardage. Every time he touches the ball, he'll move it across the line of scrimmage. Third and short, he's a good guy to give it to because he doesn't back up. He keeps going forward. First down, FSU. First and goal. Carter. Touchdown. His 18th career TD for number 13. And the left side of that offensive line overwhelmed Syracuse. Carter there being congratulated. I tell you, he's just the kind of guy you want to get the ball. Split back, it's kind of a sweep action. You're going to see Bennett head up in there, make a good block, pulling guard. Carter gets right in behind him. Whoops, let's go back to the right. Ends the score. Andrew. With plenty of leg, it is 10 to nothing. FSU looking to snap Syracuse's 16 home game unbeaten streak. Another look at Florida State's first touchdown in the carrier, though. On Hayward Haynes, number 65, full and lead. Bennett, number 22 in front. Carter just ducks in right behind him in for six. That's the way you draw it up on the chalkboard when you use those little X's and O's all these coaches talk about. Florida State's probably awfully happy it's playing indoors today. Outside, it's about 45 degrees, and there is a chilly mist falling. But indoors, always 72 degrees in perfect climb. I tell you what, Paul, in Florida, that chilly mist is called snow. <laughs> Number 33, David Walker. Number 30, Chris Chavers. The man missing, the missile. And Ismael. 
the injured left leg. We hope to have a status report for you. Andrews puts his foot into it. And this is Chambers. He attracts attention at the 22, and from that point, the Orangemen in business. There's Anthony. Anthony Dexter Carter out of Baxley, Georgia. You know how you get Dexter out of that, don't you? Yeah, only because you told me. Yeah, he's ambidextrous. Coach Bobby Bowden, he knows that he's quite a football player, too. Five plays, 32 yards, less than two and a half minutes. The Knowles up by 10, playing like a perfect 10. Bill Sharp, whose Orangemen failed to gain a single yard and who turned it over with the interception, has it for a second time. Owens, nice hole. To the 31-yard line, Odell Hagan came down the line. The Knowles tackle to make the stop for FSU. Syracuse only had 19 yards rushing and 36 attempts to get fit week before last. That time they pulled the tight end and, a, and another tight end over to make a, almost an uh, unbalanced line so that Owens could run to his right and pick up good yardage. That came to eight, second and two. The blocking back is Dwayne Pinnon, number 43. There's Hagan. Pinnon. Carruthers tried to push him back, and Hagan's too. Kirk Carruthers, FSU's leading tackler, with 50 stops on the season, 30 of which for Bobby Bowden's Knowles have been unassisted. And remember, also, just a sophomore is Carruthers, so great playing time, great deal of playing time as a freshman last year out of Michigan. And that man right there, Coach Bowden, uh, very high on number 45, wearing white today. Syracuse needs less than a yard on third down. So they load it up, full house backfield. Close to the first down marker. He had to run a long way to earn it. Errol McCorvey, the corner on that side, the sophomore from Pensacola. This run support, but not before Syracuse earned the first down. Interesting call that he would go out wide. Running behind the right side there of the Syracuse line is Owen. Florida State doing a good job of matching up on those drive blocks. Holds him very nearly short, but by about the length of the football, first and ten, Syracuse. There you see the shift again, Paul. Almost an unbalanced line to the left. On the option for the first time, Owen's in big trouble. Reagan's is there. And so is Anthony Mullen. Carruthers, too. Syracuse has wanted to run the option this year. The question is, do they have the talent to do so, triggered by their quarterback? Well, typically what you do if your quarterback is not real fleet-footed is you do what, what Char did there, is you flip it out quick. But the thing that that does is take away the threads of a quarterback run. Everybody goes to the tailback or the trailing back, and you get four or five people around the ball a whole lot quicker than you'd like if you're the offense. Syracuse went five yards in the wrong direction. Second and 15. They trail early, 10 to nothing. Play action. Char over the middle. Complete up to the 34 yard line. The reception by Chris Gedney, a freshman, or rather, pardon me, Michael Owens out of the backfield. And Kevin Grant, the outside linebacker, with the stunt. Deep drop, a little bit of a fake, trying to run the linebackers out and get Owen underneath. Brothers and his helpers reading it all the way. Very short pickup. Brings up third and a little. That is Brothers, of course, rather than Grant. And he died. Getting in motion. Great grab. Rob Carpenter into Seminole territory at the 48-yard line. Char fired it like a rocket. And the sophomore, the 183-pounder in Carpenter, made the grab in traffic. We'll be moving on the left part of your screen. Does a good job of getting down. I tell you, an even better job by Char to get the ball down. Over the middle when you're a deep 17, 22-yard zone, get the ball down so there's no tips. And if you do miss it, you miss it short. Nobody in it. 
17-yard reception by Carpenter. Owen, nice big hole. Inside the 35 to the 34. Errol McCormick from the secondary. But Syracuse now has regained its point. Here's the potential we talked about in the opening. Look at the blocking. Great interior blocking. Owen does a great job of getting upfield, then trying to make some moves and get outside. Reagan's on a good hit with some help, but a great pickup by Syracuse that time. And remember, this man has never gone over 100 yards in a game. 15 there. The Orange has come 32 yards in two plays. Owen. Inside the 30. Howard Dinkin. From his outside linebacking post, the sophomore from Jacksonville, 200 pounder, takes the stop. Great block by Dees this time, number 86. Probably get the very end of look of it right there on Reagan to get him down. That allows Owen to get outside. It takes pursuit to bring him down after a pickup of four, five, or six. One of a number of key Pennsylvanians that has matriculated north to the rolling hills of central New York. Second down. Draw. Owen. Back to the line of scrimmage. Eric Hayes, the senior left tackle and the three-year letterman hit it good. Odell Hagen's two. Nothing simple. Nothing simple. Isolation draw. Hayes just does a great job of, along with Hagen, to closing it off, bringing up short, short yardage situation. Third and about four. Then you get a good look at him. Down and in, who's in, down in spelt, spelt 278. Yeah, his bench press now is close to 450 pounds. Third down, possession snap. Sacked by Hayes. Hayes with his first sack of the season. And it came at a critical time. Not only does that kill the drive, it takes him out of field goal range. Florida State stunning on our offensive line. The two tackles pinching inside. Hagan standing up looking for the for the draws. Hayes just gets off the ball quick. At 288, I said 278. The Tampa, Florida native in there for the sack. I may have been premature to say it takes him out of field goal range, for here will come a 49-yard effort off the leg of the freshman John Biscuit, his previous best of 43 yarders versus Temple. Trailing 10 to nothing, Syracuse attempts the three. Well, it's a fake, and the pooch putt. The crowd doesn't like it, but look at the result. The coffin corner kick kills it inside the five yard line. It's gonna get a great roll. I mean, watch the, watch the way this ball rolls. Uh, uh, right on a straight line, right for the four-yard line. It looks like he's got eyes on it. Real, real easy call for the referee there. John has a 28-yard effort of near perfection out of it. And although the crowd realizes that that prolonged drive by Syracuse failed to post any points, they've pinned Florida State deep in their own territory. With a 10-point lead from his own goal line, the toss is complete. Peter Tom Willis to Ronald Lewis. Out to the 10, a little breathing room. Second down. Florida State fans, of course, familiar with Lewis. Carpenter for Syracuse is just a bigger version. Little out route. Catch number 10 on the year for Lewis. Again, trying to get isolation out there. Syracuse's corner is kind of small. Florida State's receivers a little taller and a little bigger. Trying to get one-on-one, -on -one, try to break a tackle and move it upfield. Rob Thompson with free safety on the step. Here comes Lewis in motion. And Willis fell down. May have become entangled in the feet of his guard. Either Hayward Haynes or Tony Yeoman. Either that or you just catch your cleats in this thing. Looks like he just catches his cleat. Hard to tell from that angle. But this, this turf is so sticky. It's like Velcro. And uh, you can get tangled up in it and fall down in a heartbeat. Third and six. This should be the final play of the first quarter. See the seam there on the left-hand side. This turf is uh, in 13 and a half foot sections. They roll it out and they got a machine pole called the grasshopper. 
It zips this thing together. The Knolls have taken a timeout with 16 seconds remaining in the first quarter. We'll be back. Next Saturday afternoon, we'll be in the mountains of Southwest Virginia, live at high noon. The Florida State Seminoles with their second consecutive road game. We hope you'll join us. Back to live action here, facing third down in the winning moments, moments of the first quarter. Carter out to the 15-yard line. A flag goes down. The game was enough for a first down. And it's a face mask called that you tell me against Syracuse. Sweep action, same play he scored on, except this time to the right. Good block downfield by Edgar Bennett and a good cut by Carter trying to get just across that 15-yard line. There you see the face mask as Carter turned upside down. Carter's having a big afternoon. Already having scored a touchdown on a nine-yard run. And here with an important third down carry. Get another look as Carter turns his back to the turf and goes belly up to the top of this dome. Watch the face mask right there. And they get another one, actually two, Paul, as we look at it on the replay. That gets the Knowles out. They began this drive at their own four. No time on the clock. And Carter out to the 25-yard line. And Quarter number one is over. Bobby Bowden has to be pleased with the results for the first 15 minutes of play. We head to period number two with Florida State leading Syracuse. 10 to nothing. The second quarter opens. Peter Tom Willis throwing on second and six at its first down. His big tight end, Reggie Johnson, on the receiving end all the way out across the 35 to the 38. The cornerback Walker, the strong safety Sandquist were there. But Willis with a great toss. Long throw from the opposite hash mark all the way to the sideline. Lewis runs a little curl pattern, and Johnson sneaks in behind him on the out. Nice 15, 16-yard pickup. Willis with his sixth completion. He's six of eight by our numbers for 43 yards. The toss to Carter. Flag down on a clip across midfield, but it will come back. Down to the 41 yard line. Rob Thompson, the free safety on the stop. See if you can catch the clip. Watch Ronnie Lewis, number seven. He's going to clip, trying to come back. He's going to see people collapse right at the point of the right there. It is. That's a clip in just about everybody's book. Good effort downfield by Tony Yeomans on a great run by Carter, but all for naught. Watch again, Lewis on the clip. But coach, I took out two guys. <laughs> Tim Sanquist, the strong safety, the sophomore from South Windsor, Connecticut. The fellow offended. Their third leading tackler has been around the ball a lot already. In a 10 to nothing football game, Richie Andrews converting a 44-yarder and Dexter Carter with a nine-yard gallop. Andrews, the extra point. The Knolls certainly dominating in terms of time of possession. From the 26, Willis thinking deep. Over the middle, open. Anthony, and he spins, fumbles. And it's Syracuse with the football. Greg Walker. Walker was there to pick up the bounding ball of Anthony's second effort. End zone look, good play action fake. Anthony's gonna come left to right. Excellent throw, watching Plant turn back inside to elude a couple of the tacklers and then out comes the ball. Good strip job right there. Walker, Johnny on the spot to pick it up. You may have seen, too, as the play ended, the tight end Dave Roberts clip for Florida State. There is Walker, but Roberts is in agonizing pain on the field and being attended to. He was clipped at the end of a play. Roberts, just a junior. 
And again, once again, in that particular situation, a, a, a player contact injury. But uh, coaches just are scared to death of this turf. Watch Roberts. He's going to be coming there right after the ball. He's going to get his, going to get his foot clipped behind him and just stumble. He's going to get a good look at Dave Roberts, the, the player at halftime. That's only the seventh turnover earned by Syracuse in five games this year. Shaw on the attack. Dwayne Kennan handles it for the first time. In this quarter, out to the 45-yard line. We won't see a great many backs in blue and orange today for Dwayne Kennan, the fullback, and Michael Owens, the tailback, play nearly exclusively for Don McPherson's ball club. Counter option action with the first option, that being to the fullback. Drive blocking up front, Florida State. Syracuse uh, line just going after each other. Picks up about three or four. Florida State with a quick 10-point lead, and, and Syracuse, the good possession to close the first quarter. And it goes again. Shard sacked a second time. Shelton Thompson contributed to it. Audible by Shar. Florida State coming to pressure. Man coverage. Shar was going to try to throw the ball. Thompson and his buddies are just there too quick. Don McPherson has seen his quarterback sack ten times now in two games. Eight, eight against Pittsburgh week before last. They can't protect him. Third and nine. They must cross midfield. Get me in motion. Look out. There he goes again. Shelton Thompson and a blitzing Kirk Carruthers. Here you see it. Pressure up the middle. Delayed blitz by Carruthers. Nobody picks him up from the top of the screen. And bingo. Put another one in the book. Just a sophomore from Michigan State land. The third sack for the Knolls. Number two punt returner in the country right there in Buckley, 26-yard average. Syracuse in the past has done a terrible job of protecting their punter. Look for them to keep in. Look for Florida State to return. Hawkins gets the punt away, and here comes Buckley. From his 20. For the 26-yard line, the start made by Alban Brown. Warning, this video contains adult content not suitable for children. Join us as we make the rounds with sorority girls, college cuties, and the girl next door in the all-new Girls Gone Wild College Girls Exposed. It's hotter, sexier, and wilder than ever in this totally uncensored video packed with hundreds of beautiful, real college girls unbuttoned and out of control. It's not sold in stores and can't be shown on TV, but you can call now and get the all-new Girls Gone Wild College Girls Exposed on video or DVD for the unbelievable low price of only $9.99. Use your credit card, and we'll also send you the all-new Girls Gone Wild Sexy Sorority Sweetheart absolutely free. Even we couldn't believe what these crazy young co-eds did when we handed them the cameras. And you'll see it all. Raw, real, and uncut. Then preview other all-new Girls Gone Wild titles. Satisfaction guaranteed. Cancel anytime. If you're over 18, call 1-800-942-3377 to order College Girls Exposed on video or DVD for only $9.99. Use your credit card and you'll get sexy sorority sweethearts free. That's 1-800-942-3377. Or see more action at girlsgonewild.com. Let's see the perfect notebook through your eyes. A big, vivid screen, a fast Intel Pentium 3 processor, one-touch internet access. How about the power to turn heads? Oh, you'd like a deal. Okay, get the Compact Presario 1700T Internet Notebook PC for just $14.98. Order today and add a quick dock port replicator for just $49 more. You truly are a person with vision. Call toll-free 1-888-267-5869 now. Leading 10 to nothing in the second quarter. Carter outside, off the block, 41 yard line. What a block in the flat by Reggie Johnson, the tight end, to hold up Dan Busey, the inside linebacker, number 55. Great block by the wide receiver. I believe it's Dalsey for Florida State. Look, 
Look how Dexter Carter is going to set that block up. Dalsey really doesn't have to do anything but shield Walker. Carter moves back inside for another six or eight. That's a great run right there by that young man. A gain of 15. Edgar Bennett stumbled as he hit the hole. And again, I'll come back to it, Paul. This turf is so, uh, so much like Velcro that these players are having a great deal of difficulty picking their feet up. You've got to pick your feet up on turf. You can't slide your feet like you do on, uh, on grass. Nick Economou, the senior, shaken up on the play. And again, also go back to my point, you see that seam running there. It's, it's different running on turf. First time Florida State's been on it in 89. And uh, you, you've got to do things differently. Nick playing today because Mike Morris, who normally backs up Tony Yeomans, broke his foot in practice following the two-lane game. That he did, had surgery, will be out four to six weeks. I think Economo just got kicked on the shin. The Orlando Magic tip off their historic inaugural season against the defending world champion Detroit Pistons. Join us this coming Friday evening live from the fabulous Orlando Arena. 15,000 fans will be inside. We hope you'll pull up a chair to catch Chip Carey and the Goose, Jack Gibbons and myself at 7 o'clock right here on Sunshine Network. Second down and a short eight on the draw. Open field, Bennett. Across midfield, he loses it at the 40. Is he marked down, or is it a turnover? Syracuse with the ball. On the recovery is Fred DeRigi, the nose tackle. Is it a fumble or not? Well, we should get a fairly good look at it. Bennett moving up field. Ball comes loose there. Definitely a fumble. Good hustle by Syracuse's nose guard to get down there and cover it up. The second seminal turnover. Two turnovers. Two for Florida State. Two for Syracuse. And another slow-moving Noel. Another opportunity for Shar and company. The double shift. He's the tight end, the furthest man out on the wing. The toss goes to Owen. Nowhere. Shelton Thompson, the outside linebacker. He added 100 pounds to his bench press strength during the offseason, and it shows here. Well, he just runs outside to force it back in and then has the lateral movement to wrap up Owen. Florida State coming with a lot of defensive pressure so far through quarter and a half, quarter and a third, trying to make Syracuse's offense execute, to make them perform. Owens has rushed for 24 yards thus far from his tailback position. Moore in motion to the top of your picture. Counter option, and now to throw. Almost interception. Intercepted by Dedrick Dodd. The intended receiver, Rob Carpenter, and Shar was nowhere close to throwing it to him. It could have been a busted route by Carpenter. Well, I don't want to make Mr. and Miss Shar upset, but this is a terrible pass. Carpenter is open. He have just laid that ball up, and he didn't have that much pressure. He just touched past that thing over. Dodge was out of place. It would have been six going away. Not great numbers for a fellow who threw for a career high 233 in Syracuse's last outing at Pitt. The tight end move. Andrew Dees on the left side as Shar was barking it out. Came up and went back down. And the referee Al Hines says disregard the flag. The tight end can move, Paul. The tight end, once he's set, does not have to stay set. Therefore, they'll wave that flag off, inadvertent flag. That tight end can set, and he can pick himself up, go in motion, move over to the other side, go get a drink of water on the bench, whatever he wants to do. So they'll pick it up and let him go at it again. Third and a long 11, closer to third and a dozen. 
from its 37. Sure. Complete, but Reagans is there. Andrew D's the tight end on the delay screen into the flat. The route out there, hoping that either blitz or man-to-man -man coverage would get him open. Split back, D's on the slot, just going to sneak him outside on a delay pattern, hoping to get him laterally. Reagans does a good job of getting there, not trying to make the big hit, just trying to bring him down. And uh, that's a load to bring down at 6'6", 250. Hawkins, the punter, had a 46-yarder in his last effort. Buckley brought it back eight. FSU, the top team in the nation in terms of punt returns. Tumbling punt, Buckley on the run. Back the other way. <laughs> and into the bench. And up he goes. Howard Dinkins with a great screen block. They're almost setting a pick. Florida State 10 to nothing. We'll be back. Florida State with the lead. The fake reverse. Carter. He turns that into a nine-yard game. And I don't know how he did it. Carried the ball on his hip, hoping that Syracuse would go with the flow. What you're seeing, Paul, is Florida State playing with the confidence to make things happen. Carter that time on the fake reverse. Watch Lewis, he'll be moving left to right. Carter will be going to the top of your screen. They'll fake it, Ronnie will run around. Carter will hang it on his hip. Now watch the spurt move. These are what I call spurt moves. There, back out, we'll go back inside. Then we'll do a little spin move, a little spurt, and then we'll spin again, and we pick up nine. That's confidence. That's running the ball with confidence. George Rooks, the left tackle. Stopped him that far shy of the first down. Carter having a big first half, and there are eight minutes and 38 seconds left in it. Carter averaging right at five yards a game coming into the contest. Now for the game, up at the seven. Senior. He's just fun to watch. Not that big, not that strong, not that fast, but very much that effective. Michael Tanks at 260 pounds over the football. Inside handoff in it. First down, and he keeps on getting it close to midfield. Sean Whiteman, who is a Florida native and plays corner for Syracuse, Sean's from Clearwater, Florida, looking Look at him take on the fullback. Now, Sean's going to give up about 40 pounds right here. And one of the things you got to like about Edgar Bennett is he keeps those legs going. He's always moving upfield. We talked about that earlier in the first quarter. He doesn't back up. And at 222 pounds, uh, he carries a lot of forward motion with him. At midfield, first and 10. Lewis to the bottom of your picture. Bennett again. <laughs> Bobby Bowden and company are not rotating the backs of, as we've seen them in the first four weeks of this season. Keith, this has been exclusively a Bennett and Carter tandem. And on the ground, Florida State not throwing the same ratio of passes to uh, the times they run the ball, trying to exploit uh, what they think is their superiority on the offensive side of the line of scrimmage with their offensive line against Syracuse's front five, including the two outside linebackers. The same this way. Lewis the other way. Had it into the air. Incomplete. Fred DeRidge, the nose tackle, number 67, got it with the right arm. Muscles right past Michael Tank. That he does. He does a good job of, a, of the over and under move. Gets one arm up and the other one under, and then just gets one of those paws up there. 6'2", 268-pound senior. Right up there in uh, Willis's face, and uh, that's, that's a way to keep uh, a pass from getting downfield. Don't ever let it get started. George Rooks, number 91, came within about a step of catching that and rambling away. Possession snap, third and six for FSU in Syracuse territory. 
four-man rush. Willis with time, incomplete. 32-yard line. Reggie Johnson, the intended receiver. Good coverage by the inside linebacker, the senior captain, Dan Boosie. Coming right at you, right to left. The ball is behind Johnson just a little bit, but a catchable pass. Coach John Eason will be all over. Brad Scott, the tight end coach, will be all over. Grand level look. Good protection for Willis. Both backs out quick. Got four on five up front. Good pass, just a little bit behind, and Johnson unable to bring it down. To punt Charlie Ward for a second time. Bad punt. Went right up in the air and into the bench. Off the side of his foot. That's the first poor punt by the freshman in Ward from Thomasville, Georgia, this year. And the ball will be marked at the Syracuse 40-yard line. Ward only averages 39.1 yards per kick, but as a team, Florida State, number nine in the country, at a 40-yard clip because all the returns are negatives. That is a seven-yard punt. That crowd has been very quiet throughout most of the first half. Florida State able to put 10 quick points on the board, settle them down, and the ground game, too. I'll tell you, though, if Syracuse gets rocking, the scoreboard can change quickly. Seven oh three remaining in the first half. Owen. <laughs> Kelvin Smith, the inside linebacker, playing with a bad right shoulder, the Jacksonville native, on the stop. Keep the Rolling Stones played here a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and they said that even that concert wasn't as loud as Dick McPherson's backers can make this place when the Orange are going good. Well, Coach Bowden says that this is rumored to be the worst place to play football if you want to try to hear a signal. One, the, way, one way to keep that from happening is to get on the school board early. Gedney in the slot. There's a little option. Oh, and Butler belts him out of bounds, shy of the first down. Don McPherson, the quarterback a couple of years ago, could both run the option and throw the football. And he had a little bit better quickness than the quarterback now in Shar. So as you mentioned earlier, he's primarily a pitch guy. Draw the defense to him and give it up. That he is. And if you can take away that threat, the three options, the fullback, the quarterback, or the tailback, it's much easier to defense. Florida State scared to death of that, of, that, of that option attack, and you saw right there, they're taking away the quarterback option while making, making pitch it. Let pursuit catch up. Timeout taken by Syracuse, the first by the Orange. Both will have two remaining when we return the Seminoles lead 10 to nothing. A full show for you at halftime. We'll visit with Dave Roberts. Stacy Strays as well, an entertaining feature on a fellow who's already earned his college degree and has two years of eligibility remaining. And we'll take a look at the first half highlights as well as the numbers from this one here in Syracuse, New York, where Florida State playing well on the road, as is the tradition of Bobby Bowden's program. Leads 10 to nothing. Coach Bowden's 4-0 in the domes if you count the forfeited loss to Tulane out in New Orleans one year. Of course, the New Year's Day victory over Auburn there this past year. When he made his first trip to the campus of Syracuse, Zonka and Little were in the backfield, and Schwartzwalder was the head coach. He's been coming up here for better than 20 years. Out of the backfield, Tennant at midfield. Out of a tackler, still going. 29-yard line, Syracuse. Dwayne Kennan is the third leading receiver on the year for the Orange with plays like this. Well, and he's also a threat out because the average is 12.8. You're going to see 79. Bednar's miss a tackle, or that would have been six. Dodge, number 28 for Florida State, ever to bring Kennan down, but he's a threat out of the backfield. 13 yards every time he touches it on the pass. Movement prior to the snap, and they'll bring it back. Mike Bernard, a tackle. Either Bernard or Sims move. 
That'll cost them five. Syracuse so far with not a lot. There's a call there. Syracuse with not a lot working offensively. Kenny gets a good pickup on the pass. They come back right back and give him the ball on the ground. They play good basketball up here. They know what it's like when a shooter gets a hot hand. Nearing the five minute mark. There was nothing in the middle. All they could do was bounce outside. The speed again by Anthony Moss. Carruthers there too. You see Carter. If the line is unable to part the front wall, Florida State Superior outside speed will run him down. Well, everybody caved in to the left. You saw a good block on Hayes of Florida State, but they left Carter and Carruthers and Leroy Butler off the corner position looking for the cutback. Second and 15. Get me wide to the bottom of your screen. On the pitch, Owen. Outside quickly. Inside the 30 to the 29-yard line, Henry Ostazuski for a big guy at 260 pounds from his right tackle position. He got over there pretty quickly to run him down. You're going to see a great block by number 64, the Cummings for Syracuse up on White. Just gets him completely out of the play, but unfortunately for Syracuse, Owen stumbles trying yeah. to get around him. I don't know if Henry, on a second look, would have caught him or not, but he was coming awfully hard. Well, you've got to give him a, a big A-plus for that effort. You know, he's carrying around 6'3", 260, trying to run down Owen at about uh, 211, and a sprinter uh, in some regards in terms of speed, and a little bit of a mismatch. Looking to throw on the run. Now being flushed out and taken down. He has little time to throw for a Howard Dinkins was coming from the backside, as was Carruthers. And Florida State knowing that with eight sacks against Pitt in their last ball game, Syracuse not doing a good job of protecting the passer, and they're coming all out with pressure. That time, Shar with good coverage downfield, nowhere to go. And as we said, not real nimble-footed, a great arm, but not real uh, fleet of foot. Florida State puts them in a field goal situation. John Biscop to attempt a 44-yarder to put Syracuse on the board for the first time. He nailed it. Syracuse scores with three minutes and 13 seconds to go in the first half. Biscop with his career best, a 44-yarder to pull the orange within three. Well, that young man right here has got plenty of leg. The knock on Biscuit, number one there in your screen, has been his inconsistency. But he's got plenty of leg. Picked a 58-yard field goal in high school. Traditionally gets the ball very deep on kickoff. Dick McPherson was the head coach, quite successful at the University of Massachusetts. Went over and coached the linebackers at Cleveland in the NFL for San Martigliano, and then took over here. This is the 100th season of Syracuse football. You see the commemorative patches on the shoulder pads of the players, the logo on the field. And the 53 victories that McPherson has posted, coincidentally, are exactly 100 fewer than Ben Schwartzwalder, who was here for 25 years and is one of Coach Bobby Bowden's role models and heroes in the coaching profession. And McPherson and Bowden are very similar. Uh, there's about a year's age difference between them. I think one of them's birthday is on November 4th and the other one on November 8th. Bowden will be turning 60. McPherson will be turning 59. Their teams are very similar. Programs are very similar. Great rivalry could be uh, here. They come down to Tallahassee in 91, and uh, unfortunately not many games scheduled after that. Biscuit with his right foot into it. High and deep. Here comes Shannon Baker. Out to the 27-yard line. Kevin Green got him around the shoe tops, caused him to stumble backwards. 
And Florida State with the football trying to kill the final 3.07 of the clock as Peter Tom Willis returns to the huddle. Now, if you're Florida State with a little over three minutes to go and your opponent has just moved the ball 33 yards on seven plays, kick a field goal to move within a touchdown, do you sit on it? Do you open it up? I don't know. I guess that's why I'm up here and not down there on the, on the field. On first down. He's going to the air. Deep over the middle, open Anthony. Two yards shy of midfield. Syracuse may have thought that he would sit on the football. The free safety, Rob Thompson, made the catch. Good pass protection, a fine route by number eight and Terry Anthony. Well, Florida State knowing that uh, Syracuse would play a lot of zone coverage, run the deep crossing pattern, front of the uh, deep people, behind the linebackers, Anthony there. Number one receiver coming into the contest in terms of receptions for Florida State. Again to throw. Over the middle, complete. 34-yard line. A second member of the Fab Four in Lawrence Darcy. Well, the Fab Four has not enjoyed publicity as great as it's received here in New York. The fans here very aware of the four-man receiving core that Bobby Bowden was bringing to Syracuse. And I want to apologize to Darcy. Anthony is number two on the team. Darcy number one. Got those confused, but a little corner route with a great catch on a low throw. 39 yards and two snaps. Peter Tom off the draw. Carter shaking and baking. Loses the ball. But Florida State falls on it this time at the 21. And may bring it back to the 26 and say that he lost it when he hit the turf. Draw action with a little bit of a trap there. Good block downfield by uh, Yeomans again. And Carter fumbling the ball, I believe, as he hit. Did they rule it a fumble, or did they give it there where Mancini They ruled it, it a fumble because they marked the ball to the officiating crew. Referee Al Hines in command there, as you see, at the 22. Good hustle by Mancini. A 12-yard pickup. Willis, 4-6, touchdown! <laughs> Terry Anthony, a four-play drive. The Knolls go 21 yards, 18 yards, 12 yards on the draw, and the final 22 through the air, Peter Tom Willis to Terry Anthony. Richie Andrews add, on to add the extra point with 153 remaining. Now the only people in the world that like Astro Kerr for kickers, because they have a nice <laughs> level soft, clean spot to put the ball down to kick off of. Maybe holders too, and that's Brad Johnson, the junior, to set it down. He does. Andrews kicks it through. And we'll take another look of the Seminoles' first touchdown pass of this afternoon. Florida State fans will come to know this as the corner route. Be working on the right-hand side of your screen. The receiver will work inside, inside pressure, move to the hash, and then break it back out. Willis will just deliver the ball on a rope. That's a well-thrown, tight-spiraled ball right there. Bingo. Nice hurdler's catch. Six points, Florida State. You know, I said earlier, would Florida State sit on it where they open it up? Uh, I guess we've got that question answered. Anthony with his third touchdown reception of the season. The fifth pass this year off the right arm of Peter Tom Willis. The Fab Four coming into this one had caught 50 passes for better than 800 yards and five touchdowns. Now they have six. And haven't seen the numbers, but working on that thousand yards between the four of them. Fairly efficient with the elapsed time, wouldn't you say? Well, and last out outing that Florida State had against Tulane. Tulane had the ball 42 plus minutes. Florida State had it 17 plus minutes. Florida State won by 50. One of the ways you do that is you go four plays, uh, 73 yards on a mere minute 14. The man closest to you, number 33, is David Walker. That's Chris Shavers on the far side, number 30. Set the field. Richie Andrews, kickoff. See the mom? <laughs> On his towel. One way to say hi. <laughs> 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 
between Charlie Ward kicking one out of bounds and now Andrews. Uh, Ford, uh, excuse me, Ward uh, kind of shanked his eight iron and, uh, and uh, Lewis kind of sliced his driver. Excuse me, uh, Andrews kind of sliced his driver. Got an affinity for the right hand side as they're moving of that uh, sideline over there. Coach Dick McPherson has now pulled Chambers and he has put Michael Owens back to receive number 44. So Syracuse has changed its kickoff receiving team with 153 to go in the first half. The Knowles led 10 to nothing at the end of period number one and about scored the orange seven to three here on the hill in the dome on the campus of Syracuse University. There's the senior and Owens standing next to David Walker. You know, Paul Syracuse really likes this dome. Nice scoreboard. See that inflatable roof that's held out, actually held up by fans. There's 16 five-foot fans that hold that roof up. They love playing in here since its inception in 80. They're 38 and 17 here in the dome of Syracuse. And as we said, they've won 16 in a row. Andrews to Owens from his six. Slipped at the 17. Late hit. No flag. David Walker may be nice to his mother, but when he comes across the white line, very intense. No one quite sure who they're going to catch it. This time they do get a good call and they don't fumble it like they did the punt earlier. Owen just kind of lets his feet go out from under him. I'm telling you, you got to pick those feet up or you'll stumble. This turf uh, used here at the uh, Carrier Dome is extremely sticky. Late arriving to the huddle is Bill Sharp from Canandaigua, New York. 6-1-2-0-4. With 149 remaining in the first half. On the counter, Owens. Out to the 22-23 yard line is Owens. Kevin Grant, the outside linebacker, credited with the tackle for Florida State. Curious play call. Very much so, and uh, the fans wondering what's going on. And right now we've got confusion as they don't know whether to go to the line or get in the huddle, and the clock's running, 23, minute 21, minute 20. The fans upset with the fact that with two timeouts remaining, Syracuse is not being aggressive in the waiting moments of the second quarter. They're going to run it out. That's a first down. Well, possibly their thinking is uh, Dick compared to the persons that, uh, you know, they do get the ball at the beginning of the second half. Florida State's going to take a timeout now. Even though Syracuse made the first down. Well, I think there was some confusion down on the field. Uh, I think uh, the instructions that would have gone to Florida State, as you see uh, Shar talking with, uh, with his coach there, was if they didn't make it, they bring up second down, let's call, uh, excuse me, third down, let's call a timeout. Maybe we'll get the ball back. But Syracuse did rush for the first down, first and 10 on about their 28-yard uh, line. And, uh, a little break for Syracuse, some time to call two or three plays, a minute or two remaining. Plenty of time to get downfield. Coming up at halftime, Stacy Straces. Listen, Dave Roberts, the Florida State tight end. Try and find out for you, too, the severity of his injury that he suffered in the first half. And then we'll have the highlights from this one. Peter Tom Willis, incidentally, has thrown for close to 150 yards. And if he cracks the 300-yard plateau today, Keith, it'll be the first time in 22 years that a Florida State quarterback has thrown for 300 yards or more on three consecutive FSU outings. Tim Hammond, 1967. That'll take you back a while. On first down, to throw. On the roll, to the boundary, complete to Moore. First down. Stops the clock momentarily with 54 seconds remaining. 
Moore did not get out of bounds. Errol McCorvey, the sophomore corner, on the stop. The clock rolls again. Shar under center. Draw Owens. Sprinting to the boundary and out of bounds. Leroy Butler sitting sprawling into his own bench. Now you're seeing more of a typical two-minute offense. Syracuse going some out pattern. Running a sweep wide to give the, uh, back the opportunity to get out of bounds. 44 seconds remaining. Plenty of time to get uh, five, six, maybe seven plays in. That was Ken in the fullback rather than Owens the tail. And number 44 with number 43 with 44 seconds remaining. And another sack. Howard Dinkins with the third for the Knowles. Brought on by the stumbling of Sharp. He tripped over Kennan's right foot. Well, not only that, an unfortunate break for Shar, a good break for Dinkins. He rolled and turned right into Howard. Big loss. Bombs away! At the 10-yard line, Rob Carpenter had a stride on the secondary. McCorvey and Dodge back there. But he did have a step and a half. Well, Dodge misread the angle of the receiver a little bit behind before we trailing. You see a good indication of Shar's arm there. That ball was uh, probably 65 yards in the air. Nobody doubts that this young man can, can uh, air it out when he needs to. Not much of a home field advantage, is it, in the Carrier Dome? Not right now, anyway. Greatness in football can best be described as winning in an arena filled with folks pulling for you to lose. And the same crowd appears to be pulling against its own Syracuse Orangeman. Hawkins as the first half comes to a close. Nobody back for FSU. Florida State is already on its way to the locker room. And leads. 17 to 3. Our halftime show from the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University is coming right up. Syracuse by two touchdowns, but there's still plenty of football ahead as Richie Andrews kicks us into the third quarter. And from his five. And not reaching the 17-yard line, Antonio Johnson. On the return for the Orange. The first half numbers, Keith, and total yards, the most apparent difference along with yards rushing. Well, and the biggest thing, too, is the passing yardage. The Syracuse only 72, but four sacks on Shar. Meanwhile, Peter Tom, 10 of 14 for 139. Turnovers about equal, penalties very equal. Time of possession, a little bit skewed, but 17-3 on the scoreboard. Had two great breaks for Florida State, two Syracuse turnovers in their own territory, helped FSU to 10 first quarter points. Sharp pumps, floats, with a stride, great catch! Rob Moore, Leroy Butler with him, perfect touch by Shar and a fabulous left-handed grab by a wideout who his head coach says is the best athlete we've recruited here to Syracuse since I've been the head coach. Come action, Char lays it out and then back in. Butler on fairly decent coverage, but Moore makes a great catch on a great throw. This is a touch pass, Paul. You just kind of throw it to a spot because you've already committed yourself. Trying to lay it up and let that nose turn over as Char did right in the breadbasket, one-handed catch. The Orangemen send a signal right away with that 28-yard gain. Higgins showing that Shar is not quite quick enough to run the option to the short side. Well, Shar probably won't get away from most of Florida State's down defensive linemen. As we say, he's not real quick on his feet. Higgins, a former linebacker, is pretty quick for a man that weighs 268 pounds. He just runs him down laterally. Todd Kasmer 
A sophomore wide receiver reports for duty, checking out Kevin Barker, a tight end. See, Shar's got those plays on his wrist there as we look at his numbers in the first half. Kazmer this way. Carpenter to the top of your screen. Kennan the fullback. Owens the tail. Time to throw. Andrew Dees, the tight end, carries the reception into Florida State territory and down to the 46-yard line. Mr. Dees and Mr. Reagan meet, meet again, as we saw in the first half. Crossing pattern, he's going to come all the way from the left-hand side of the offense, the top of your screen to the bottom of your screen. Reagan's in zone, he pushes the corner out, and then looks back inside for the ball, and they pick up about six or seven yards. For a team which went to its halftime dressing room under a cascade of boos, this is an impressive opening series for Syracuse as we begin the second half. He threw it away. You could make a case that he was gunning for Kennan. I would argue that the routes he wanted to throw to Rob Moore and Rob Carpenter deeper downfield were not there. Well, I think actually what he was trying to do was set up the screen. They'd been successful on that, moving the same way in the first half, and Florida State's defensive lineman Eric Hayes is all over, all over Kennan, and uh, he has to throw it out of bounds. Hawkins, three kicks. Averaging 45 yards, 44.6 in the first half. His best effort of 55. And Buckley, who ranks second in America, in returns, stands at his 10. A very poor punt. Yet, the upside of that is Syracuse does not put it in Buckley's hands. The downside, Peter Tom Willis with one touchdown pass and 139 yards through the air in the first half is coming in the game with last-minute instructions from his head coach. Well, Willis, a 61% passer coming in. Sure, not too bad on his numbers if you, if you look at them from a completion standpoint. But Willis, uh, 10 for 14 in the first half, 159 yards. and as opposed to his counterpart, and I know Coach Bowden's aware of this, Shar with four sacks, Willis with only one. The punt was only 20 yards. Leading by two touchdowns, here comes Carter, who scored one of them. He actually lost the football when taken down by Fred DeRiggi. Actually had to fall on him, Keith. I think Dirigi from behind. Well, Dirigi around the football. George Rooks, Rob Burnett, who we haven't heard a lot from on the side, is down tackle. Uh, Dirigi's been real active up there, going head on against uh, Michael Tanks. Robert Stevenson, the big tackle to this side. Hayward Haynes, Tanks, Yeomans Brown, tackle to tackle. Second down. Trying to give the quarterback time to throw. Lewis, first down, out of bounds. Upfield at the 40 yard line on a perfect timing route and throwing against the grain on the run. Willis is perfect. Sanquist, the strong safety. Florida State the running the waggle action. You see Syracuse in the zone. One man rolls up underneath. One man goes deep. Zone coverage. Lewis is right in front of him. On a little waggle action to the, the Willis's left. He delivers the ball first down. Picked up 11. 150 yards for Willis today. Out route, tipped, nearly intercepted. The All-American outside linebacker Terry Wooden got a hand on it, and Sean Whiteman, that Florida native, the corner, had he come up with it, he could have run a while. If he'd come up with it, he'd been gone, but the man that makes this play is Wooden, number 90. Very active, very agile, gets his hand up, deflects the ball. Florida State again trying to run that little out pattern. Whiteman. From Countryside High School, the senior, 5'10", 182. Six players on Syracuse's team from Florida, none on Florida State's from New York. Counter for Carter. Ahead to the 40, DeRiggi with another stop. He's made a few tackles today as the Scranton, Pennsylvania senior. A little bit of a double team there in the middle, and he works his way off and then just does a good job of powering tanks backwards and wraps up Dexter Carter. Brings up third and about nine. And 
you can feel things beginning. You feel momentum beginning. Richie's a big part of it, but you can feel old Mo. He's moving. Yeah, he's out. Five backs in. Dick McPherson said he wanted a secondary to go for the interceptions, to be aggressive. Let's see what they do here. Incomplete. Johnson running open away from Whiteman. Peter Tom failed to connect, and the Knowles will punt it away. Action we've seen before from the opposite hash all the way across to the tight end on a, on a sideline pattern. Johnson's open, but you see Peter Tom has to lay the ball out a little bit because of good underneath zone coverage. That posting to throw the ball outside a little farther, and he wanted incomplete fourth down. Ward, it's a punt for the third time. Off the right side. It bounds inside the 30, takes a Seminole roll, and will be down at the 19-yard line. Greg Walker there for Syracuse, had to let it pound away. And Syracuse has the football, although the Orangemen face an uphill struggle. The second possession of the second half for the Orangemen. Trailing 17 to three. Bill Sharp. On the option, Owens to the short side, nothing doing. Howard Dinkins played it perfectly. And the sophomore outside linebacker made the stop. Florida State running what they call a, a, a differing option attack. That time, Dinkins, instead of taking the quarterback and letting the linebacker run outside on the pitch man, the linebacker straight right around his tackle to take the quarterback. Pitch quick, and Dinkins out there one-on-one -on -one with Owen, and he'll win that a lot of the time. This Watch is his fifth stop of the afternoon, Keith. Watch the linebacker move outside to take the quarterback quick. He pitches it too quick, this Bill Shar. Dinkins out there all day long. He'll make that nine out of ten times. No game, second and ten for the boundary. Open, 35-yard line, and gingerly out of bounds, Rob Carpenter. Carpenter gets free on the down and out, secondary backpedaling. Counter action, go one way, roll back the other. Good protection by the line. Carpenter's wide open over, over White and in front of uh, McCorvey there. It's a good, good throw, good execution. His second reception this afternoon, 32 yards on the receiving end of Shars tosses. Shars thrown for 124 yards today. And one interception. Here comes the blitz. He gets it away. Butler's there. And it's incomplete at the 32-yard line. Intended for Rob Moore. Butler and Moore, two fine athletes, stride for stride. You're going to get a good look here from the end zone of Butler beat, beat once and recovers twice. He's beat now. He makes up. Moore does a great job of catching the ball, and then Butler knocks it away from him with his right hand. Another look at it from the sideline. Look, he's got the ball right there, and then with a little arm action, Butler strips it out of there. He came up with that same grab earlier in this quarter on the other boundary. That he did. 11.06 showing in the third. Second down and 10. <laughs> Loose ball. FSU. The sack results in the fumble. John Weish fell on it, or rather Moss recovered it. Pressure coming right at Shar Florida State with a full all-out blitz. Weish comes, man coverage in the secondary, strips the ball, Florida State comes up with it. There's no way to defend it. Shar's just got to throw quick, and he can't. Too much pressure, lays the ball down, and. Plenty of white shirts there to gobble it up. The third turnover. All three have given Florida State exceptional field position. It is also sack number four. This time, they fake it again. Carter faking to Dossie off the reverse. Defense sets the tone for a football game. Excellent field position offensively, and Carter again keeps this one on his hip for a second time. 
couple of people were fooled by the action from Dawson moving back across on the fake reverse, but uh, basically Syracuse is down five, doing a good job of playing lateral football, keep your upfield shoulder free, and make a tackle. Dossie wide to the near side left. Willis, 1-6. He's going for him. Incomplete at the goal line. Whiteman was there defensively. This, a post corner key. Running to the middle, breaking back outside. A patented route for that man right there. Bobby Bowden has run it for years and years and years and had plenty of people to do it. <laughs> It's a long throw. The ball's in the air a lot. And Whiteman does a good job of closing quickly. The ball's overthrown. Probably wouldn't have been caught, but Whiteman's right with him. Same pass that Florida State scored on in their last uh, last touchdown right before the half. Peter Thomas only one for four through the air in the second half. <laughs> Manages to get it away. Incomplete, though. He was just fortunate as he fired Carter's way to get it out of there. You mentioned the AstroTurf. Florida State doesn't have an artificial turf on which to practice. It takes a lot of getting used to. No, Florida State doesn't practice on turf at all. Bobby Bowden hates it so bad he won't lay it down for fear of the injury in practice. From 39 yards out, almost 40, attempting his second three-pointer of the afternoon out of Johnson's hold. Gene Halp to snap it. The snap, the spot, and a perfect kick. And it is 20 to 3, Florida State. From the dome in Syracuse, as Florida State continues to roll, we'll return. What comes your way next Saturday live? Colorado State, Earl Bruce and Company, hosting the Cougars of BYU, Lavelle Edwards. We'll join that game as early as we possibly can at 3 o'clock following the Knowles and Virginia Tech, which will come your way at high noon, also live, an exclusive presentation of the Sunshine Network. And this has been nearly an exclusive Florida State Roadshow today. 20 to 3, the Knowles. Bobby Bowden's young field goal kicker, Richie Andrews, has just drilled his second three-pointer of the afternoon. This one good from 39 yards out. The cap of four play, 55-second possession. You're looking at the 79 coach of the year after going 11-0, and Dick McPherson for Syracuse after going 11-0 in 1987 was the 87 coach of the year. Antonio Johnson. One hit, two hits, and down he goes. Leon Fowler on special teams coverage was the first man there, number three. And John Davis, a reserve defensive back, just getting up, finished him off. That didn't take long, did it? They've done that in the past, and I guess that's something we need to get used to seeing if you're a Florida State fan. Here come the Boo Birds. There's one of two ways he can react to it. You think of Kyle Morris at Florida having to endure the same fate. Owens. Into the middle. Linebacking core there again. Kelvin Smith credited with the stop, the inside linebacker from Jacksonville. You know, Paul, the first verse of Boo, Boo song was for sure, but I, that second verse right there is for me first. Syracuse has not lost in this stadium since September 27, 1986, when they fell to Rutgers 16 games ago. More in motion. Two fakes and out of the backfield. Kennan, boom. He dropped it. Thompson coming from the front side, and Reagans gave him a nice shot to the rib cage from behind. Well, they've used Kennan a lot. We saw it in the first half. He had seven catches coming into today's ball game, right out of 13 yard average. They like to get him outside with people in front of him. Watch the offensive backside, offensive guard come out. They're trying to get him upfield. 
Ball's just a little bit behind him, but certainly catchable and doesn't come down with it. Brings up third and about seven, maybe eight. Florida State wanted to pepper those two backs and Owens and Kennan just keep hitting them a little bit. Got a good shot in there from Reagans, which Kennan will remember. He had time to throw, but Florida State secondary had Rob Moore and company very well defended. And it's putt time for Syracuse. A lot of time to throw. Florida State not coming with pressure, just with the three down people. Man underneath, zone coverage behind, and trying to run a Florida State route, post corner, corner route. Ball underthrown, brings up uh, fourth down, and on comes the kicker. Don't be surprised if FSU plays for the block here. They got 10 men up, and there's Buckley, the fabulous freshman, Hawkins to punt it. He's had one block this year. Flag down. They went for the block, didn't get it. Ruffin, the kicker, will be the call. And that should give Syracuse the first down and the football back. Well, we you're gonna, that particular play was a situation where a player came so free up the middle that he overran the block spot. You need to get about six or seven First yards, down. maybe five, to run the punter, come up the middle and completely overruns the block, does Howard uh, to, uh, Dinkins. Good look of it here. Goes right over it. The ball's kicked right underneath him. What can you say? How did he miss that? The Boos greet the young junior, Bill Sharp. Even though the major infraction against Florida State, which had Dinkins got his right hand on it, just inches to the right, this game would be over. For the ball would have bounded more than likely toward the end zone, and the Knowles would have soon added at least three more, probably six. As it stands now, 20 to three Syracuse, Shar trying to turn it around. And the home folks are grumbling inside the carrier dome. To the 45. Keith Carter on the stop, the inside linebacker. You may be saying, why is Syracuse staying on the ground? That was a designed pass. You don't see Shar trying to look out to either Carter or Moore. He had two wide receivers to his outside and twin situation. No one to throw it to, so he moves upfield. You see he's minus 50 yards. The biggest product of that is the eight sacks against Pitt two weeks ago. Bobby's taken off the hat. <laughs> Bobby White Shoes bowed. Dees the tight end flop to this side. Counter option. Now to throw. Off the motion. He's been sacked five times now. Shelton Thompson has still another. The counter option he wants to throw, Keith, and I'm going back to my notes, Paul. I think that's the sixth sack. They had four at the half. I believe this is the second You're one correct. here in the third quarter. Counter action, nobody is open. Great coverage downfield by Florida State. And down he goes. He has been sacked officially now five times, Keith. Been a lot of them. That I can't keep track of them. Thirteen times in two games. Penalty. Flag down. Too much time. The 25-second play clock had expired. Delay a game. Mr. Pass Rush. He's ready to come back in. And Dick McPherson and his staff trying to figure out a way to move the football on a tenacious Florida State defense. You know, Florida State's defense has progressively gotten better. They gave up a lot of yardage against Southern Miss over in Jacksonville, a little less against Clemson, a little less against LSU, about 330 yards against Tulane in their last contest. While that's still too many for Coach Mickey Andrews and his staff, they are making progress. Every game, there's a little less yardage given up, a little bit bigger of a hit, some more knock -em backs, holding some people on third down and playing a little better. Florida State walks up the blitz. They don't come. Char sacked again. Odell Higgins, Eric Hayes, and
Anthony Moss celebrate this sack. Got a deal in the middle between Hayes and uh, Dinkins, looks like, for Shelton Thompson. Hagen's from the outside. Dees, the tight end, was wide open, but Shar had no opportunity to get the ball downfield in the middle. The Knowles roughed the putter the last time. Hawkins set the kick. Hagen's pushing him back, and on fourth and 21, following sack number six now, King, here they come again. He just did get that off. Buckley called for the fair catch. No, he did not. He feigned everybody. There he goes. Goodbye. What a fake by Buckley. Oh, my. He did not call for the fair catch and returns it 69 yards. He just stopped as if he did and then took off. If it was coach, give him a raise. If it wasn't, you're going to have a hard time convincing me this kid's a true freshman. The second best return man in America just shows watch. his skill. Watch, he just stops, just like he called for the fair catch. And then, bingo, let's go out here a little while. Picks up some blocking, Deacon's downfield. Makes a good cut back here. Possesses great speed. Once he gets outside, nobody's going to catch him. I mean, you just, you just slap it air and try to catch heels. Great fake. Super fake. From Pascagoula, Mississippi. And Richie Andrews adds the extra point. And Buckley and company have now built a 27-3 lead in the Dome with 6.02 to go in this the third. Watch him, he just stops. Watch the official already pulled his whistle out of his mouth. And then he takes off, that's great. That's great action there, very much like a, a, a catcher waiting at home plate with a man trying to score from second on a single. He'll just stand there with his hands on his hips trying to decoy the runner into not sliding and catch the ball and tag him. Buckley did the same thing receiving a punt, faking the fair catch and then taking off. Andrews is laughing about it. He's kicked two field goals and three extra points. And Dick McPherson, his face is Syracuse orange right now. Awfully upset. Not only does Buckley do it with athleticism, <laughs> as so many of Bobby Bowden's talented skill players have done, he possesses great style. Well, you see Bowden laughing there. I've known that man for a long time. I think what he's laughing about, I talked earlier about it, you know, if it's a coach, give him a raise that called that play. I think by that indication right now, that's all Terrell Buckley. That's, that, you know, every player comes in wanting to do his little thing, and as long as it's within the team concept, Bowden will let him do it. I think that's all Terrell Buckley. He probably just as surprised as Syracuse was by what happened. You best break that one for a long game and not get caught standing back there at your own 31. A 69-yard return. Here comes Antonio Johnson a third time in this half. And as he crosses the 20, he's greeted by a Seminole reception committee that is led by Leon Fowler and LaVon Brown. Well, certainly Buckley, as a defensive player, understands uh, uh, running punts back. But what he didn't understand is he's also doing the same thing the offensive does. One play, 69 yards, uh, just seconds off the clock. Looks like uh, some of Florida State's uh, offensive series we've seen tonight. Florida State looking to win its third consecutive game, and Syracuse trying to avoid dropping its second straight. They lost to Pitt two weeks ago after two season opening victories. At this point in time, these are two teams headed in direct opposite directions. Owens to the 19. And a flag is thrown, and it's dropped by the umpire on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage. Henry Ostrzewski, the right tackle, a sophomore, 260 pounds from Boynton Beach on the stop. Replay. Deep handoff, counteraction. Owen with nowhere to go. Tries to do a little spin move a la Dexter Carter. All brought back, major infraction holding. Offense, 
when the umpire throws it, it's a surprise when it's not a holding call. Very much so. Hey, the umpire has a difficult job. He gets banged around by everybody, and all he gets to do is hold, uh, call holding buildings. Everybody says they're debatable. You can have a holding building on every play. The Knolls take it, first and 20. Toss sweep, Michael Owens, number 44. Bounces the ball, out of play. It's marked upfield at the 48 and will be brought back and spotted inside the 45 at the point in which he dropped it. But on that one sweep, number 44 galloped like the great number 44s of old. Well, you saw a little bit of a procedure there by Terrell Sims, number 62, but he breaks right through, attacks at the, at the line of scrimmage, and then this is the flashes of brilliance that uh, Syracuse has come to expect from their tailback. We talked about that in the opening, and there's a, there's a, a brief glimmer of it. Consistency is what they're looking for from Owen. Their last possession, Syracuse posted a net gain of minus 12. Here they gain 30 on that one carry by Owen. And Ken in the fullback pulls his way ahead to the 48-yard line. Florida State with some substitutions on their front seven. Shaw taking advantage of it. Two great running plays by Syracuse that time. Tailback around the end, fullback up the middle. That's good old Syracuse football. Yeah, you see the contrast in style. Syracuse to the left, not substituting. Florida State substituting liberally. Saw it in that picture. Gain a seven, second and three. Dinkins on the stop, the snap of four. And the toss. New man in there. This is Chambers, who breaks the tackle to earn the first down. A hard charging. Chris Chambers with the first down for Syracuse. Built low to the ground, 5'10", 201 pounds. First real action we've seen from this sophomore. Does a good job of getting away from White's there, number 44. A good head up tackle or arm or shoulder tackle there by Dinkins, but he bulls himself through for the first down. First and 10, Syracuse. Well, their second first down of this drive, which began at their 21-yard line. Shavers first carry, nets him five, the sophomore, Pennsylvania native, and the quarterback Shark calls it at the line of scrimmage from midfield. Owens part off the left side. And into the arms of Kurt Carruthers. Great collision that this time the running back wins. Owen head up with Carruthers as he Carruthers spills in or steps into the hole, and Owen won that little battle. Florida State as Bobby Bowden checks upstairs. And as you see on the scoreboard clock, never rushed for 100 yards as an Orangeman has Owen approaching it now. 27 to 3, the score. FSU. Down the field. Caught. Carpenter. Inside the 25. A pickup of 21 yards. Shar to Rob Carpenter, the sophomore. Shar saying, if Willis can do it, I can too. Seven step drop, looks left, back to right. Carpenter over the middle, in front of the safeties, behind the linebackers, makes a good out move, a la Lawrence Dalsey. Gets good protection up front. Florida State trying to work up field. A little deal up there with Hayes and Hagens, but only three rushing. Shar steps up with confidence and delivers a great pass for a first down. Gedney in motion. The setup on the wing. On first down, three minutes to go in the third. Intercepted. This is Butler with his second interception of the afternoon. He may go the distance. He shall. Touchdown Seminoles. A 90-yard interception return. I'm going to let the pitcher speak for itself. Butler just steps right in front, just like you coach it. Get to the sideline quick. Had a couple of blocks from some people turning back and just outraces everybody. 
Oh, that's so pretty from a deep, former defensive back's perspective. That's so pretty. Breaking on the ball right in front of the receiver and off to the races. 87 yards officially. Andrews nails the extra point. Timeout on the field, 252 to go in the third. 34 to 3, FSU. And it's six for number six, who brings it back, literally, the length of the football field. Five step drop, good pressure by Hayes up the middle. Shar under throws. Butler in zone, just steps right in front. A la Clemson, 1988. Watch him throw the head back. We got to teach Leroy how to sprint. Got to get that head down <laughs> and drive through it. Leroy running with him, shoulders flaring and that head back. That's all right. He's in for six. This time, a team in orange does not catch him at the one-yard line. Butler's second interception. Six quarterback sacks from the defense. A pounding performance. And the Knowles in command. And what's really amazing is this is against the 24th ranked passing attack in America. It's the Syracuse Orangemen. Coming into the contest, Shar and his folks averaging 234 yards a game in passing. Thirty-four to three. This would be Bobby Bowden's fourth career victory over Syracuse. And extend his King of the Road reputation. You know, he's won at LSU, at Nebraska, won at Ohio State, at Notre Dame, on and on and on. You can name this the Bowden Dome. The Carrier Dome, named after the air conditioning conglomerate, is not an air conditioned building. But the Knowles have punched a few holes in this roof today. Johnson. Takes a punch or two at the 19-yard line. Flags down. Definitely have a clip. Reggie Freeman on the stop key. That'll bring the uh, Orangemen back, and we're going to see a new quarterback, number six. Mark, Mark McDonald. McDonald. Mm -hmm. He's thrown only four passes this year. There you see the officials marking off the infraction. Syracuse once again will start deep in their hole. The hand for the sophomore from Spring, Texas. We thought the Knowles had traveled a great distance to be here. Well, after being knifed by FSU's number six, Dick McPherson responds with his number six. Mark McDonald. He'll try to put six on the board, six feet tall, 195-pound Texan. As Keith told you, his only action this year against Temple, a couple of completions with 13 yards, no scores. He hands it to Owens. Now the same play, which brought down a cascade of booze earlier, <laughs> brings down cheers. Well, fans uh, have every right to come to the stadium, pay their good hard-earned money, and be as vocal in, in any direction they want. What will oftentimes happen, Paul, in a situation like this is just by the mere presence of a new face in that huddle, an offense will be slightly rejuvenated. They'll get a little more excited. Blocks will be executed and carried downfield a little longer. Runners will run a little harder. Receivers will run a little crisper routes. And your offense will be better. Chris Hall made the stop, the reserve cornerback, after an 11-yard pickup by Owens who nears the 100-yard plateau. Kennan works the middle. That is a significant number, and one of the very few bright spots for the blue and orange today is that a highly touted running back, a guy who came in here so well thought of that they gave him the same number worn by Jim Brown and Floyd Little and the late Ernie Davis. They give him number 44. He's never in his career rushed for 100 yards. He's a senior, and Today, he got has 91, 91, which is his career high. He had 91 in a previous game. Minute and a half to go in the third. McDonald, boundary, nice grab. Rob Carpenter makes the diving catch in front of Buckley. Nice so, grab and a nice running throw. Carpenter working to his right. 
Counter action, goes back the other way. Tackle moves out to protect him. Florida State with not a lot of upfield pressure, throws the ball well. Nice throw, nice catch. First down. McDonald and company trailing by 31. Notice McDonald turning that little wristband right there. He's got plays on both sides of it. He was on page two, and he had to turn back to page one to get the right call. They don't do a lot of substituting, so they waggle or sign the signals in based on the plays that are on that card. He took too much time. The play clock expired. He doesn't have a lot of experience, and the time wasted away while he was trying to figure out the hieroglyphics of what was on his wrist and what was being signaled in. Being a quarterback in high school, I used to wear that thing. Looks a little bit like a warrior in Star Wars or something, but uh, his particular one, as Coach Bowden looks on there, has got two pages. He was flipping it around and 25 second clock expired. Now, if you're Mickey Andrews, this is what you would have paid good money for to come in. Six sacks, two interceptions, an interception return for a touchdown, two fumbles, and a punt return. Chuck Amata will be smiling ear to ear. Play action, McDonald, deep in the pocket, under pressure. Here he goes, Moore's open. Great catch! 25-yard line, first down, Syracuse. Get a good look at it from ground level. Good protection on the play action. More runs by your screen and out of your screen. Lays the ball in, does McDonald to the inside. Dodge gets completely turned around. Didn't even know where the ball was and a great, great reception. End zone look here from high. McDonald working on your right. Watch him lead the ball back inside and they completely turn Dodge around. He loses the ball and a great fingertip grab there. Super catch. They picked up half the length of the field, 48 yards. Off the option of the pistol, and daylight. Touchdown. He explodes over the 100-yard plateau for the first time in his career on a 26-yard touchdown gallop. This play is set up, Paul, by the difference in the quarterback. McDonald a little bit better able to run. Florida State knowing that. Shelton Thompson for Florida State crashes down and leaves Owen wide open on the corner. That's a quarterback difference. That's not that young man's difference. He's been plugging along all day. John Biscuit, his team trailing 34-9 with eight seconds to go in the third. Mark McDonald, who engineered this drive, will hold for him. John Flannery to snap it. <laughs> 34 to 10. Florida State's offense, Paul, I don't believe has touched the ball but one time in this quarter. Baker, the freshman. Out to the 40-yard line. Tremendous blocking by the Seminole return team. 34 to 10, when we return, Florida State will have the football to open the fourth and final period. Chris Parker is in there, along with Moore. And that's Paul Moore out to the 44-yard line. A new backfield for Florida State. Moore and uh, Chris Parker, the fellow suspended for the two-lane game, the sophomore tailback from Jacksonville. It has been Bennett and Carter exclusively through the first three quarters. We stopped that time by Sean Whiteman, the corner, Terry Wood, and the All-American linebacker. saying to the bottom of your picture. Johnson, the tight end, split off the line of scrimmage. Willis. Intercepted. Picked off. Robbie Thompson across midfield. 
to the 35-34 yard line. Thompson's third interception of the year. In fact, the only defensive back with interceptions for Syracuse. Good pressure by Wooten up the middle, uh, on the outside, excuse me. And he overthrows Lassane. Thompson right there to pick it off and head up field. They mark him out of bounds upfield at the 43 yard line. Thompson is the only member of the Syracuse secondary with an interception this season. And that was his third. And it is only the third interception thrown this year by Peter Tom Willis. McDonald keeps. That's a tough couple of yards. Yeah, but it does something, Paul. It, you know, you've got offensive linemen that are turning around seeing that quarterback take a lick and move it up for two. And this is your new guy. And that, that kind of inspires you. I mean, he's one of us. He's in there. He's digging. And uh, it, to the degree you can't get dirty on artificial turf, if you will. And I tell you, that young man has really sparked this Orangeman offense. He's driven him 91 yards for a score. Syracuse's first six. Play clock winding down, only six seconds to go on the play clock. They may not get it away. They do. McDonald. Boom. Carpenter for the 25. Now what's happening, Florida State cannot afford to put the pressure on McDonald that they could on Sharp. They're rushing three, dropping eight. Char or excuse me, McDonald's doing a great job of picking them apart. See, no pressure on him. Curl pattern in the seam. Great catch. Turns up field, just like you draw him up. Fifth catch for Carpenter this afternoon. First and 10, going in, trailing 34 to 10 in the fourth. And down he goes. Tackled for a loss by Anthony Moss. Florida State countering those big plays now with a little bit of a pressure defense. Stunt on up front. Moss crashing inside. See him moving uh, right to left. Just beats the block. Comes inside. It's Oliver Strickland. Oliver Strickland, freshman. yes, correction. Oliver Strickland. He's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. A bit closer to home than he is in <laughs> Tallahassee. Folks are at the game like that. Oliver. Loss of five. Here comes the blitz. Owens. Right. Keith Carter, Kirk Carruthers. The linebackers stayed at home, made him pay the price. Great read by Carter that time. Florida State coming with a safety blitz from the left. Weiss coming from the left, but Carter stays at home, watches for the draw. There it is. Makes a good open field tackle with help from Kirk Carruthers. Looks like up. one of those nutcracker drills in spring practice. Yeah. The old uh, Oklahoma drill. <laughs> you remember those? Oh, yeah. Third and a bunch. With Keith Jones, I'm Paul Kennedy. As Syracuse sets it up, third and 15. And a big snap for comeback hopes, which are down. Sack number seven. Higgins is there. Kevin Grant is there. Now you're seeing a coach's game. You're seeing Mickey Andrews and, and Dick McPherson. Florida State coming with pressure again. McPherson going, are they coming pressure or not? We've had success when they didn't. This time we did. Four white shirts on McDonald. Great coaching strategy there. Kevin Grant, Ocala, Florida native, on the blitz. And a sack in plus territory. Makes him out of field goal range. Hawkins try and kill it in the corner. Then Seminoles deployed, anticipating a fake. Nobody back. The ball bounds at the 12. And scoots into the end zone. Hustle on the part of JoJo Wooden. Couldn't keep the ball from bound, bound, bounding into the end zone. And it's Florida State stalking victory number three, as is Syracuse. And Peter Tom Willis still in the game, an indication of Bobby Bowden's concern that momentum might swing back the other way. Parker. Out of Wooden's tackle. And now runs support for Syracuse. 
Syracuse's defense with Wooden and Brown on the outside linebackers and Lucy and Bavaro in the middle, they don't uh, allow you to cut back very often. Luke number 90 is going to move upfield, string it back out, miss the tackle, but force Parker back outside, and then he gets help from the secondary and the rest of the supporting cast. Willis's first pass attempt of the second half was complete. He has since missed his next six. Oh, for his last six. One for seven in the second half. The ground game's the thing here. Paul Moore, the fullback. Well, Florida State's backed up. They're trying to keep the ball on the ground. That accomplishes two things. Tries to keep you away from the big play, i.e. the interception on the last drive, and also eats some time off the clock. When you're up by 24, you can afford to do that. Casey Weldon, reserve quarterback, standing next to Bobby Bowden, and all eyes on the most important number there, and that's the fingers in the middle, one in the middle. Tick, clack, tick. Lewis wide this way, two tight ends. Parker. First down. Still on his feet across the 40. Ahead to the 43-yard line. Tony Yeomans leading interference, the senior three-year letterman, the guard. Yeomans pulling from his guard position, onside guard, not backside, but onside, more up front. Yeomans with a good block on the corner. Parker breaks it outside. That carry will take him over 100 yards for the season. As you said earlier, Paul suspended for the Tulane game for training violation. Seeing his first action in three weeks. In the eye. 220 pounds on that frame. The middle again. Not a lot there, is there? For Paul Moore. Dan Mercy, senior captain, number 55. On the stop. On an earlier drive in the third quarter when Syracuse had the ball, Owens took it inside. Kirk Carruthers met that time Paul Moore. And Dan Busey got acquainted. Gave him a yard on the play, second down and nine. Setting up the screen. Parker across midfield, first down 45 to the 40, 35, 33 yard line. Wood, the linebacker on the stop. That's only the second completion for Peter Tom in this half, and it's a big gainer. Only the fifth catch by Parker. You see isolation action up the middle. It does a great job, does uh, Willis of backpedaling to get upfield. Great downfield blocking. Anthony, and Yeomans, and the rest of the folks downfield. Robert's there at the tail end doing a great job of allowing Parker to kind of snake his way down the sideline for a good pickup. This drive for Florida State began at its own 20-yard line. This is the seventh play of it. The gain was of 23 off the screen. Great catch. <laughs> Shannon Baker drug the foot. Sean Whiteman on his back. Baker, the freshman from Lakeland, the fine grab. Three-step, zing it. Plant, step outside, throw it. Gets down, would have been good in the NFL. Looked like both were down. Baker, number five of the Fab Four. 7.20 remaining in the game. A pickup of seven for young Mr. Baker. Parker cradles it. Now lowers his head to the 21. Greg Walker, the corner, strung it out. Parker kept looking for a sliver of daylight, Keith. Then he would have gone. Big league play by Walker did exactly what you ask your corners on run support to do. String it out, string it out, keep up field, outside leverage, and allow your pursuit to catch up. That's exactly what he did. 7.08 on a rolling clock. Florida State threatening again. Very nice drive, first sustained drive of the Florida State offense in this half. Uh, 
on first down. Going in. The draw. Paul Moore attracting company after a yard. We mentioned earlier that Dave Roberts had been injured in the first half and said he'd be all right. He's back in there. Got quite a scare, though, didn't he, when he got clipped first half? Any type of uh, where you get your feet knocked out from under you and you really don't uh, land square on this turf is an opportunity for surgery. I love Stacy's feature on him. As a grad student, plays in a rock band. <laughs> near the six-minute mark, bootleg, Peter Town, run pass option, he throws, complete. Breakaway to say to the six-yard line, first and goal, Florida State. You know, one thing, Paul dawsey has been a little bit of a disappointment. You understand I'm saying that tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> Had 18 receptions last year, nine of them for touchdown. That's reception number 19 or 20, only four scored. He, uh, his ratio has dropped. <laughs> Every other time last year he caught a pass, it was for six. The Knolls' leading receiver in Dawsey. The second catch of the afternoon. And the Knolls up 34 to 10. The crowd here in the rolling hills of central New York begins to head home. As Florida State tries to score an icing touchdown. Well, look out. Parker took his eyes off it. We talk about Owens and his inconsistency in running the ball and being aggressive. Uh, the no knock on uh, Chris Parker is that sometimes uh, he grips off into La La Land. Sanquist, the strong safety, fell on it. The pitch looked to be perfect. Parker was not. Sanquist has it. 34 to 10. We'll be back. McDonald, following the recovered fumble by Syracuse, keeps it himself around the right side, out to the 12-13 yard line. Florida State with a lot of new faces in the defensive side of the ball. Tell you what, I'm real impressed with that young man right there, Paul. He has really come in on that 91-yard drive and sparked the offense. Now how did he get out of Texas? I'm familiar with all the Pennsylvanians that have come this way. In fact, that's one of the major reasons Joe Paterno now refuses to play Syracuse. He's been losing so many quality players to Dick McPherson. But a guy coming out of Spring, Texas with this ability. The pitch. Owens. Grant is there. Why did he take a lick? <laughs> the quarterback of McDonald. Just as he pitched the football. It have been Dinkins that gave him a shot. That young man right there may have silenced some critics uh, this afternoon as well, Paul. Watch Dinkins there and McDonald say hello. Oliver Strickland. Strickland. Why do I keep calling him Dinkins? I'm sorry, <laughs> Oliver. Well, you got 98 there, and they're not even close, Paul. Don't I don't know. I'm trying to help you. A little backside support here. McDonald fires upfield. Complete first down. On the receiving end is Andrew Dees, the tight end. That's a super throw by a young sophomore going against the fired up defense. Three, four, five, seven step drop, steps up, throws the ball with authority right on the numbers. Great route, just past first down territory. That's the way you convert them. McDonald with a candidacy to be the starter next week when the Nittany Lions of Penn State invade the Carrier Dome. Moore. Taken down by LeVon Brown, but not after the first down reception, up to the 41-yard line. Again, another throw with authority. Deep drop, McDonald surveys the field, steps up and wings at tight spiral, right on the numbers. Florida State in a little bit of a prevent. Lots of room underneath. A gain of 19, he adds to it. Another fine pickup, Mark Swanson. On the receiving end. As Florida State started the game, now Syracuse in the no huddle offense. 3-12 on the clock. McDonald flushed.
intercepted. The third FSU interception, Chris Hall picks it off. The freshman from Coco, Florida. And that will do it. 3.01 to go. We'll return to wrap it up. The interception bug, not the only one. Uh, McDonald's throwing his first. I was going to say, sure, not the only one to have thrown one today. Well, a little bit of uh, youth showing through. A pass he shouldn't have thrown. Willis will take the screen to Paul Moore. Lumbering across midfield. Spinning and down inside the 40. Rob Thompson takes him off his feet at the 39. Well, there's a there's a load moving downstairs uh, downfield as you see Hall there. First career interception for the freshman, I believe. Uh, Keith, you began your career here on this campus back in 1978. Your first starting assignment. You remember your first interception too? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I know I had three that year. I think my first one was against Virginia Tech at home, who is Florida State's opponent next week. We'll be there live at high noon from Lane Stadium on the campus of Virginia Tech. Here's Ample. Talk about disappointments as he carries inside the 30. Why didn't Ample score the first time he touched the football on the ground last week? He scored a touchdown. The first time he caught a ball through the air, pass reception, scored a touchdown. Talk about. Dossie with all those TDs. Yeah. Amp's an interesting fella. He uh, is characterized as not being very big, not being very fast, which I agree, I disagree with both. Went into Coach Bowden's office a couple of three weeks ago and said, Coach, am I going to play? If I'm not going to play, redshirt me because I'd like to go home on the weekends. I get tired of sitting <laughs> in the stand, sitting on the bench. New Coach quarterback. Bowden, Coach Bowden played him, and the rest, as they say, is history. Casey Weldon, the new QB, pitches to Lee. Running that time like he wanted to score again. Thompson on the stop at the 16-yard line. There's Casey Weldon, the sophomore letterman from Tallahassee. Mr. Make Things Happen. Five completions this year for Weldon. Four have been for touchdowns. Five completions out of nine attempts, 191 yards, four TDs. Coach Bowden characterized him and says there's some players that are just lucky, and some quarterbacks especially. Likens him to Doug Flutie. And, and uh, Fran Tarkin just makes things happen when he's in there. Lee off the drum. Coming into this game, the Seminoles had a dozen players with rushing statistics, a dozen players with receiving statistics. That means 12 guys had carried it, 12 guys had caught it, and 11 had scored. You had Butler to that. You've got 12 guys that have scored now for Florida State. And unlike Syracuse, the Knolls have just run fresh face after fresh face at Syracuse in the second half. A minute to go. Lee, they give it to him again. And he dives into the end zone for a touchdown. 40 to three. Reminds you a lot, Paul. You may disagree with me. Does Amp Lee of Chuck Muncie. His style of running, not that big, not that fast, just be able to work his way, catches the ball, get out of the backfield, heads upfield, and gets in the end zone. He must have heard us up here saying, why doesn't he score? Why doesn't he score? That's his third touchdown in two games. Andrews, right down the middle, and with 55 seconds remaining, it's a 41 to 10 FSU lead. A check of the record book showing this is the most one-sided defeat that Syracuse will have suffered here under Dick McPherson. And, for and in the corner, Keith, a lot of garnet and gold yeah. over there. You'll see the dividing line of where the seats stop on the right-hand side and moving across about third way from the left. You see Syracuse fans gone and then starting about third to the left and there are better close-up of it. Uh, the Garnet and Gold of Florida State. A lot of folks made the trip up here and uh, certainly have enjoyed themselves. The weather was crisp and, as we say, a little bit of a drizzle. We call it snow back home. <laughs> 45 degrees out, but nice and cozy in here and a, and a great uh, performance by Florida State and that man right there, Coach Bobby Bowden. His record will remain perfect, remain perfect, beneath the roof for Florida State. Johnson out to the 37-yard line. For Syracuse, 
with 49 ticks of the clock left. Antonio Johnson and McDonald back in under center. No huddle. The plays haven't been called on the sideline. A four-man rush. Seven sacks already, and he dumps this one to avoid an eight. Owens will lose yardage and step out of bounds. The secondary has played superbly. Three interceptions, one of which was returned. 90 yards for a score by Leroy Butler. The front wall has added seven sacks and a number of hurries, including this. Three-man rush, four-man if you count the outside linebacker. Good underneath coverage. McDonald just flips it out to Owens. Number 31 for Florida State. Right there, LeVon Brown, free safety. Runs him out of bounds. Get me in motion for McDonald. Flag down. Hit as he releases. Another interception. Leon Fowler with interception. Don't number get, four. Don't get excited. Young man wearing number 89 in white, Mr. Dinkins. I think I've got him right this time. <laughs> Are you sure? Jumped off sides, and we'll bring that one back. Right hand side of your screen, I don't think you can see it, but Howard was a little anxious. Again, a good throw uh, this time. Uh, McDonald moving up. He's hit right at the end. That causes the ball to flare a little bit on him. Fowler right there. And at least you can get excited for the moment. Joe Ostaszewski planted Mark McDonald from the blind side. Defense, repeat second down. And there is Leon. The freshman from Fort Myer, great size on him, Keith. Close to 6'3". Big kid, can run too. Another sack. Sack number eight, matching the total last week is Reggie Freeman, recorded by Pitt. Flag down, though. Thrown by the umpire. Somebody's holding on to somebody else. Replay here. McDonald wanting to throw the ball to Bavaro, or excuse me, the tight end right there. I called him Bavaro. Plays defense. Number 84 for the Giants is Mark Bavaro. And he catches him from the backside. That one will go against Florida State. It's a dead ball. Personal foul call. After Freeman's sack. Dead ball foul. Unsportsmanlike. Defense haunting first down. Haunting. Twerted. Haunting. Don't get to do that, guys. No dances, no celebrations. Taunting after eight sacks and three interceptions. Called Gedney, number 84 there you see him in the slot. Called him Bravaro. Excuse me. Trying to get the ball to Gedney when he was sacked, wasn't it? Not Final play, perhaps, of the game. Out of trouble, McDonald. And then down he goes, Grady Ross with this game's final hit. And it ends fittingly with Syracuse's QB on the seat of his britches. Bobby Bowden again reestates his claim as college football's king of the road. 41 to 10 over homestanding Dick McPherson's Orange Men of Syracuse. And here in the dome, it is Bowden and company who have ended that Syracuse string of 16 consecutive victory. Keith and I will return to wrap it up from upstate New York right after this.